So I, get, I think we could probably get going. It's one o'clock. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, Grant. Hey, I, I'll take your money anytime, Grant. That's fine with me. <laughs> Frog skills, sorry, what's up, guys? Yeah, the uh, uh, Arthropod Ambassador is going to do that bug zoo kind of thing. So mm -hmm. they're going to have that traveling, the traveling bug show. Should I should dress up as a I should dress up as like a big cockroach or something like that. How would that be any different? <laughs> I'll be the mascot. <laughs> How would that look any different, Jesse? <laughs> Good point. Good point. <laughs> it's only my biggest dream. <laughs> I think next time we go out, next time we go out, I'm gonna just gonna wear a costume every single time. It's gonna be a bug catching bug, so it'll be fine. I, I honestly thought about like getting for this live stream that those glasses and the nose with the mustache. <laughs> and just wearing it, wearing it the whole time. The the incognito Peter. <laughs> the <laughs> the costumes for sure. Yes, indeed. All right, let's start this off, guys. Do you guys have any questions for us? Looks like there's 22 people on here. We can start talking about bugs. Start talking about llamas and mascara, right? Is that right, Peter? Oh, dude, we're wearing the same shirt. <laughs> I knew it. I knew you were going to do it. It's why I wore this. I had a gut feeling. I wanted to be matching twins today. It'd be adorable. <laughs> I, I, I always say that the hardest part of doing anything is picking the right shirt out, you know, before I make my videos. Right, right. right. Well, let's see if anyone has any questions for us. Anyone want to ask about bugs? Ask Peter about uh, all kinds of bugs uh, or me, either way. We've got, got bugs we can uh, you, show. Jesse. Huh? I've got a question for you. All right. Shoot. What's, what's your next bug shirt? Because I'm starting to run out of bug shirt material. Oh, oh. Over here. I am currently working on a Mantis shirt. I was going to talk more about that tomorrow during the uh, Mantis live. But yes, it's going to be a Mantid shirt that has uh, a, bu a bunch of different Mantid designs on it. I'm actually working on one right now. Oh, here we go. Here's a question. How long did vinegaroons live, Peter? Um, it's hard to say. Pro probably somewhere around five years is a good estimate. It wouldn't surprise me if a few lived a little bit longer than that. Um, right. Typically, when we acquire them in the hobby, they are wild caught. And so we never really know how old they are. Yeah, that's I actually, I have, I, have, I have the vinegar in on the shirt, just like Jesse, obviously. But I, I do have a specimen over here that I can pull out and since... Somebody asked a question about them right off the bat. I know you have these too, Jesse, and so you're. Hey, I got my girl right here, She's right up here. Actually, frequently, she's doing her thing. So this one here is a male, and the reason I know he's a male is because he is of an adult size now, and those pedipalps, those pincher-like appendages up front trying to do this without dropping him um you see that sort of heart-shaped oh section yeah there. those are their pedipalps and in the males their thumb there's a spine up there on the front which would be difficult oh i can zoom in good um there's a spine up there in the front that makes it obvious he's a male and if the light were just right you would be able to see that a little bit better um this male here was actually doing a courtship dance with a female recently. I have a, a container also right over here with a female in it. And I had put the male in there and they had locked pedipalps, sort of like holding hands. Oh, that's adorable. And, and together they were sort of dancing around the tank. It was really neat to see. All right on. Yeah, I, I have a female, but she's, she's kind of in her hole. I don't really want to bug her. But you said you already have one anyway. Yeah, I've got one right here. I might pull it out here in a little bit if uh, we get a slow moment. Hey, invertebrate dude, join. All right. The party can start. I have, <laughs> I have a prediction about the trivia contest here at the end of this show. <laughs> I know, seriously. That, yeah. that invertebrate dude is going to win. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Well, at least there's three winners. So I will let everyone know we are, uh, stay tuned because we are going to have an awesome trivia. You have a chance at a bunch of different prizes. So, um, but anyways, we'll get back to questions. Who what was the next question I saw? It was a pretty funny one, I think. Here, let me look up here for a second. Your funniest experience ever. Oh, man. Oh, man. Where do we begin on that one, Peter? 
There's so many. You know, one of the, one of the ones that comes to my mind is um, the video that I made about after we were in Arizona collecting bugs. And there's that one video where you get so excited about a bug <coughs> in a tree over there. And Jesse Ray and I are standing there and we're saying, yeah, it's probably just another mesquite bug. Oh, and I was so you run offended. over there and you do like this epic sweep, like in the air through the tree and you catch something. And um, I probably said something about it being a fail video or you missed it or whatever. We're making fun of you about it being just another junky mesquite bug because there's <laughs> thousands of them down there. Hey, but they're and so big. You, you, you start strutting back. And, I mean, I, you can just see it on your face and you're like pumping your fist. And I don't remember what you said exactly, but you had, you had that really awesome, maybe, uh, I think, pair of longhorn beetles in there. Yeah, those. And, and the, the, that, that was the best part. But the part that made it really funny afterwards, if you remember, is when I uh, put that to um, the Snoop Dogg. Uh, oh, yeah, I can't even remember yeah, I like, where, where, where he's, he's they've got the guys in the, in the video with the uh, yeah. nets and they're chasing the dogs and everything. <laughs> and yeah. I did a, a side by side screen where, you know, it showed the clip of their video and the clip of you doing a very similar thing. But, you know, to hey, a, look, to bug a, hunting is life, man. Bug hunting <laughs> is life. <laughs> like, okay. that, that's so one of my the truest favorite. sport. Look, I, I always believe that they, I was a firm believer that they should, they should always have an Olympics of bug hunting, you know? <laughs> I'd be, I'd finally be good at a sport. I'd finally be good at something. <laughs> It'd be amazing. <laughs> I'd at least get a bronze, you know? That's a great idea. I'm, I'm going to bring a trophy just for you next time. <laughs> oh, man. It's all I've ever wanted. <laughs> I, uh, okay, my, my, I think my funniest memory is the first year we went to Arizona and we went out to, I don't know, like Wilcox Playa or something like that. And we were looking for, we found those like weird triops and we found uh, a few of those tiger beetles, but you could not be outside for very long because of all the mosquitoes and you were getting it was, alive. It was <laughs> So just, to, just the heads up. I actually don't, I'm not affected. I don't get mosquito bites like ever and at all. And, and I could prove, and Peter knows for sure that I don't because he saw me covered in them. <laughs> when, when something bites or stings Jesse, it just, falls down dead like it just <laughs> dies immediately he's he's poisonous right. he's toxic <laughs> <laughs> that's why bugs don't bite <laughs> that's probably my favorite memory because like, just your face in the car when you were just like no do not come back into the car like, oh we were we were horrified because as you're reaching for the door handle jesse and i the other jesse who was in the car with me we could see the mosquitoes on your arms on your body all over <laughs> yeah. you and we were, we were hiding in there for a reason. The mosquitoes <laughs> down there. I didn't even, okay, I didn't even realize terrible. that all of you were sitting in the car. I didn't even have any idea. I literally didn't even realize that. Oh, John, was, John, John was out there with you. I, was he, I don't okay, know okay. He was still yeah. out there. I, can, I just remember getting in the car and everyone was there, basically. And I was like, so oh, I sorry, video, guys. Like, I have video of this whole scene right here, too. <laughs> yeah. Where we're, we're, we're telling right. you, no, no, stay away. Get out. <laughs> don't, don't get in the car. Do you guys see praying mantis? Well, I'd see, I, I would say that you see praying mantids a lot, Peter. I mean, so do I. I see them daily. Uh, did they mean in the wild or did they mean in my house? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, not as much in the wild. I did see one yeah. uh, last time I was in at uh, Savi Island. We saw a male European. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen one in the wild yet this year. Um, and, you know, part of that is because we haven't been outside much. Um, True. You've, you've gone out, you know, with Courtney a lot. Um, but uh, the last time I went out looking for bugs with another human being, it was with you and Courtney. We were wearing masks. It was months ago. And it was the right. middle of the night here at a local <laughs> park. Yeah, and I don't see a whole lot of masks. That's really the last time I've been out. And that, that was before the mantises. Um, However, sure. However, the one mantis that we found in the wild that you found, the oh, first yes. year we went to Arizona, the unicorn. Yep. That was yep. awesome. That yep, was a that, good find. That, yeah. I'm always looking for them when I go down there. I never really expect to find one. Uh, we were very lucky to find that one just on the vegetation. And right. uh, it, was, it was a nymph. And I did manage to raise it up to maturity. And then I think I gave you the specimen after he died. I pinned it. Okay. I pinned yeah. It. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
I saw someone post in there that they wanted to see my my dead specimen collection. Uh, it's a little packed away, but I will I will pull that out someday and show it. It's it's a lot of bugs, a very much a lot of bugs. So it's um, I'm not going to try to bust it all out right now. But someone had asked if I would show that at some point, but I will. I'll have to bring that out because I pinned it really well. Actually, it looks like it's all in battle stance and everything. Uh, what what is the shiniest bug out there? That's uh, Pinky Speakeasy. Oh, hmm. I would say that uh, weevils. I, I would say Eupholus and uh, Pachyrhynchus are really kind of take the cake on that. I don't know about you. I got a. I got another answer. Um, there's my phone keeps uh, getting dark. Does is that happen to you? Do you have to touch it every once in a while because it gets dark? Mm -mm. I don't know why I'm doing that. It must be in my settings. I'll have to fix that another time. Um, Chrysina resplendens. Oh uh, yeah, Chrysina is a good one too. Yeah, uh, very. It, it looks like polished gold. Just yeah, that's the, are those the ones in Mexico? Um, Central America. Central I America. I don't think that species, think yeah. that species uh, is in Mexico. They do have a lot of Chrysina. I mean, down there. we have four in the U. I would say Gloriosa, Chrysina Gloriosa, is is up there. Those things are shiny. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, those are the, I, I would say those are the shiniest bug I've ever found in the wild. That's definitely the shiniest bug. Uh, what about the remember the little green weevil that we oh, found? Oh yeah, that was that was crazy too. Yeah, yeah, that was. I, I'm telling you, weevils though, weevils, man. They, I think they. I, I don't know. I, I, every time I, I think there's a shinier bug, I always look at Eupholus or, or Pachyrhynchus, and I'm like, these things are the most metallic things ever which is the sticker you're looking at. And this is like, this doesn't even do a comparison compared to how shiny these things actually are. Yeah, it's, it's true. And the patterning on them, it looks like some human artist painted them oh, man. with metallic paints. I mean, they're the number one inspiration for my artwork anyways, right? I mean, yeah, just the bug shirts. I need bug shirts. Well, Grant, Grant, I have bug shirts for you. You just got to order them. Oh, I know who this is. Wheel bug shirt, Chris D. One in a wheel bug shirt. She wants me to make a wheel bug design, which would be a great idea because I don't really have a whole lot of hemip rooms to begin with. So I think a wheel bug would be pretty cool. A group, a group shirt for hemiptera or just assassins would be great. Yeah, I really, I really want to do a uh, the uh, horrid king assassin bug for sure with all the spines. But I want to get the drawing where it's like it shows its back and all the spines coming up, so it's like a front view kind of instead yeah. of just like a top view like I draw most of my bugs that which would be cool how long do praying mantids live I guess that kind of varies doesn't it I mean um, a little bit uh, of, of course first of they're all they're seasonal the males, but the males are shorter lived um, right. than the females so that's always worth mentioning um, orchid mantis males can mature probably in four months if you were really keeping them warm and power feeding them. Um, most female mantises, you can get about a year out of them. Uh, I've had ghost mantises and other people have told me their ghost mantises lived for a year and a half, the females. Um, the, right. the males in that species are pretty long lived too. So out of all of the mantises I've experienced, I think the ghost mantises are the longest lived. But generally, and especially here in the United States, things are going to be more seasonal. And right. so they'll hatch in the spring. And then by the time winter rolls around, um, they're getting older in the first place. And then also they aren't- they Become finding, the elder mantis. There's not as much food out there in the wild <laughs> right. anymore. In the fall, all of their prey begins to die off, too. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, I will say that tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's live, by the way, is going to be going heavily into Mantid. So if you have Mantis questions, I would even just save them for tomorrow because we'll be talking to the Mantis guru, Lohit. He's the, he's the guy with the Mantids. Then and so are you, actually. I mean, you're also the guy with the mantids. <laughs> I, so I, was many of them. To, I was looking forward to being on that live stream with you, actually. I, I, I know. Really, I mean, Lohit Lo, Lo, Lo went to school for this stuff. Um, apparently, he, he was a kid on my mantid forum many years ago. He told me this story, I don't know, last year or something, when I met him again on Instagram. And uh, that was one of his inspirations for, for uh, pursuing the life that he has. And so awesome. I, was, I was looking forward to having that conversation with him again. And uh, be because he's, he's gone so much further with mantises as a group 
at this point than I have. And um, it seems like every time I look at his Instagram channel here, Mantodiology, that's the name of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he had changed it, I think, uh, from what it was originally. Uh, he used to change his name a lot on his channel. And so I've got, I got confused about who he was some of the times that I was talking to him. That happens anyway, to me sometimes. He's, he's got a different species every time I look at his channel on there, a species I've never heard of. Um, let alone had. So yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, going to be there watching. Are some, there are some, I mean, of course, he's wanting to get like Taxidera and all that kind of stuff or Taxidera. But there are some mansions that I didn't even know existed that he has that he's been posting. I was like, what? Yeah. It, it's, a, it's like, there's like one, it's like, it's like, it looks like an alien flew down from like outer space, right? And then it like checked out its surroundings and was like trying to blend in and then got scared by a hiker or something like that and just uh -huh. looked like that from now on. And, you know, just <laughs> fully wasn't a leaf. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's like, yeah, good enough. Very, that would be a very long common name for an insect. Uh, like an alien flew down and. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> So how old uh, how old can Goliath beetles get? Now their larvae are a lot live a lot longer than the adult. Um, pupation the the uh, pupation period is quite long too. So oh, really? as adults as adults you, you might get about 10, 10 months out of an adult. And oh really? They're just feeding, they're just feeding on banana. Super easy mm -hmm. to take care of. Um, yeah. So, so they're not yeah. like the Danastes out here. They don't. The Nassies doesn't live very long compared to that. No, no, longer, about twice as long as what you can expect from Dynasties. Right. In terms of our U.S. species. Let's see, how, how do you get, hold on, I have to redo this here because I, I hit something. How, uh, how do you get giant African millipedes? Um, well, live in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much the best way and the only way. <laughs> yeah. Um, they, they were banned from import. I, I feel like I've been saying this for 10 years, but like 10 years ago or something. Um, and that was because of the little mite that lives on them, which is apparently uh, can jump off of them and damage crops here. So they were banned from import. For a few years, you were able to source them uh, just because there were so many in the U.S. Uh, and they're, you know, they can live for about 10 years. And so there was just, after them being imported by thousands and thousands and thousands, there were just a lot here in the country. And so for a long time, you, you, um, people didn't even know about the ban because they were still available on the market because, um, you know, uh, an importer would maybe bring in like 500 of them um, in a single shipment or whatever, and then they would go back out. Um, yeah. And then a few were available, captive bred, and then there was a business, uh, Wards Scientific was selling them for a long time, um, for quite a few years, and uh, at a pretty reasonable price. Not not like $5, like you used to be able to get them. Yeah, I was going to say, I bought one for like five bucks like, at a yeah. pet store back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those were the good old days, and those uh. days are gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's when I used to get carnivorous katydids too. I used to find wow. those in pet stores really? in California, at least. Yeah, in California. Wow. Yeah, those big spiky ones. Like I, there was uh -huh. a pet store that was right near me that had those all the time. And I swear I would buy like the oldest one on accident, and it would die within like you know three months or something like that. And I'm just like, dang it! I'm like, were were those the uh, the native Neo Beretti or something exotic? No, they were the they're the they're the I believe they're in Australia. The oh, like or the raspy. The, like, the, brown, the big, like, reddish-brown ones. I can't remember the name of it. It's been a Are while since I've had them. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, okay. and they yeah. were, they're really, really spiny. Yeah, they're really cool. I've I actually... I, well, I... It was just at a pet store that I went to in California all the time, and the guy had all kinds of cool stuff, though. He had a bunch of different roaches. He had, he had walking sticks, you know, all kinds of different, like, phasmids and leaf bugs and everything. But... Yeah, we... We used to see a lot of phasmids up here too. I'm going to move my camera here. The light is a little wonky. Just shifting. Uh, Byron Bird is asking us, how long have you both owned insects? Um, probably since I was able to crawl and peel the dead flies off the windowsill and eat them. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no I mean, I've, 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 yeah, I've had pet bugs ever since I can remember, honestly. Uh, it's been since the very beginning of time. <laughs> so... 
for me, pet pet bugs weren't really a thing when I was younger, and you know, I'm I'm 12 years or so older than Jesse. Um, I I didn't know another bug person when I was a kid, and there was no internet, and so my my origin in bugs was in having a dead collection, like Jesse was mentioning just a little bit ago. And so I spent a good portion of my childhood sitting outside next to a butterfly bush. Um, it's the largest butterfly bush I've ever seen in the yard and at the house that we lived in. And I would just sit out there with my field guides because that's all we had back then. Um, you could go to the library or you could purchase field guides. Those were the only two sources of information, unless you happen to know another human being. Uh, you couldn't just go on Google and type something in. You couldn't go to shapesandnature.com or bugsinsyberspace.com <laughs> and purchase right. anything to do with, with bugs in terms of pet bugs. And so um, my origins are in having a dead collection. Um, and his question was kind of vague on that point as to, you know, when did you first have bugs? Um, in terms of pet bugs, uh, just following up on what we were just talking about, um, I, I had a couple of bugs that I, I put in containers and, and the only reason it even occurred to me is my parents got me something called a bug barn and they found it at the store. They gave it to me for my birthday or something and it had a cork in one end and that was, that was where you put the bug in and then there was this screened, uh, surface on it and, you know, it was just this little habitat, um, you know, this, I, I don't even know if critter keepers were around back then when I was a kid, uh, the, the familiar. Yeah, the uh, thing you're describing are things you can find in, uh, you can find those in antique stores nowadays. <laughs> right, exactly. And I would love yeah. to have another bug barn. <laughs> another one I had was a, was a mason jar where they had uh, a lid that was screened, you know, the, the, the canning jars where you just screw the lid on and it had a screen, a metal screen on top of it. And that was another one of my early pet bug containers. And um, so the first one that I ever kept was a Missoumina crab spider. And I put it in the bug barn and I fed it 11 bumblebees over the, over the course of its lifespan. And um, the reason that I knew that it could eat bumblebees is because as you and I have seen many times in the wild together, we'll see an insect on a flower and we'll think, well, that, that, that bee is in a, in a, it looks weird. It's in looks a very weird. odd position. <laughs> Do you <laughs> remember that video? I posted that video. Yes, yes. We were both looking at that bee and I was like, wait a minute, there's a spider attached yeah. to that. <laughs> right, right. And, and, and often we're filming when we're encountering these things. And so we're surprised when we see that this upside down bee is upside down because it's attached to a spider. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So it wasn't until, uh, stick insects started showing up into the local pet stores here in Portland, Oregon, that I really started keeping pet bugs, you know, as a hobby beyond just a couple things here and there from my yard over the years. They had and to that stick was, bug, That huh? was in the early 90s. Right. Well, you know, I, I've, I've, I've owned a few stick bugs in my time, but uh, not as many as, as you have, Peter. How many have you had at one point exactly? I remember I, you telling me this. Yeah, I've raised over a hundred species of them That's over amazing. the years. And it's been many years now since I've had any phasmids or stick insects or like they call them here in the United States, walking sticks. And I do miss them. Um, they, they, are, they are a very sentimental favorite group for me. And there are still a few that I want to see. And um, I, I have seen you with a few of them lately in some of your videos. And I don't know those, what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well you were playing animal crossing <laughs> <laughs> that was real that actually that came out of the tv that's how that's I saw it. incredible I saw it. it was the graphics it was in these games it was <laughs> yeah. mind-blowing you are you are a uh, bug magician <laughs> <laughs> bug magician yeah uh all right here here's a question for you peter how soon can i get on your wait list for certain bugs i didn't know you had a, a wait list peter I didn't have a wait list, and technically I still don't have a wait list. Um, I'm launching a new version of the website. I've, I've had my hosting with the same company for 18 years now. And though I'm staying with the company, I'm finally moving the website onto a more modern software platform. 
and um, it's a WordPress based website. And one of the features that's going to make my life a lot easier because uh, I don't know how many emails and DMs I get every day about people saying when our orchid mantises, for example, going to come back into stock or one of a hundred other things, it's going to save me a lot of time having that waitlist feature on the website where people can put their email address in on the orchid mantis page and then get notified when I list them back up on the website again. So maybe sometime here in later September, um, I had a phone call with my hosting company yesterday. We are making some final changes on the design of the website. And then uh, hopefully by the end of September, the website will be ready to go and people can use that feature and some of the other new ones. So, so where's like the Bugs in Cyberspace Platinum card? You know, like if I wave that, do I not have to be on the wait list? Like, <laughs> ah, like I'm the gold member or something? That's, <laughs> you know? that, that's, that's coming in probably 2021. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Great. I'm going to have Good. to check your credit first, though. <laughs> of course, of course. It's terrible. No, <laughs> All right. Let's see. What, do we, what else we got here? Uh, most unpleasant bug experience. Hmm. Most well, that takes us right back to the mosquito experience you were just talking about. I mean, it doesn't get oh. more unpleasant than that for me. I would say I getting will. stung by a bullet ant was probably my most unpleasant, oh, yeah. my most unpleasant experience ever of any of any sting ever. <laughs> so, <laughs> and why did you do that? I, well, I, I was dared. <laughs> it was, I was uh, very foolishly dared to do that <laughs> down at San Diego. <laughs> but luckily... Um, I survived. I, went, I felt like I was blind for like over an hour. I'm not kidding. I, I like couldn't see. It was so painful. Like I just, I, it was just probably the water in my eyes from just like how horrible it was. And it was just on my those, arm. It's not like those are called tears, Jesse. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and it was horrible. <laughs> True tears of pain. Jesse, t tell your story about the bot fly while I grab my coffee, if you would, please. <laughs> I love that story. <laughs> The bot fly. All right, Peter, fine. Uh, yeah, so I'm sure all of you know what a bot fly is. Well, I let one grow in my arm <laughs> because uh, I was very single at the time and I wanted to see how long it lived. And it actually was like, it wasn't very long. It was literally like maybe three weeks, but it was like a very long, I mean, it felt long for sure. It was, it was a very, it, it was horrible. But the worst part about it was when it got big, when I, when it got really big, you could feel it. You could feel it moving around and like scooting about and eating stuff. It was horrible. And you could never scratch it. You could never, ever scratch it, no matter how hard you try. It's just there, always there. It was horrible. What happens if you scratch it? And, and I was planning, on, it just moves. It just moves around and you feel it. It's, it was horrible. And I was planning on keeping the adult, you know, I was like, well, I'll have one in my collection, you know, ha ha. And that little, that little turd like pupated during the night and like left its little like pupa like out like, on my like resting on my arm like ah see ya like you're done I don't even want you around you know it was it was so ah gosh didn't even get its name oh. you know all that work <laughs> and you you didn't even get to keep the specimen for nothing yeah right yeah how long do velvet ants live how long do velvet ants live um as adults you can generally expect about a year out of them. I've known people to have them live a little bit longer than that. Um, I always have so many, so it's really um, when I get them. And when I say I have so many, it doesn't mean I have any right now. But when I do get them, I tend to get a good sized group of them. And I don't keep them, I move them out, um, sell them to my customers. And so I don't really track the lifespans of a lot of things. Um, what I know about lifespans, I've often learned from my customers when they report back that the um, rainbow dung beetle is still alive the following year or the velvet ant is still alive and am I going to have any more because they want to add more to their tank this year. So about a year. About a year, yeah. give or take. Yeah. <laughs> But they aren't captive bred, they're wild caught always. Um, nobody has captive bred them yet um, because they have kind of a complicated lifestyle, uh, life cycle being uh, parasites of like ground nesting bees. And so nobody does that in captivity. And so when you acquire a wild caught specimen, 
you never know how long, how old it is or how long it's going to live. Right. That's true. I mean, I guess it's any, yeah, that goes with any specimen. It's wild caught. You have no idea. Unless, unless you are witnessing it hatch out of an egg and you raise it from you right. know, point A to point B or whatever, but mm-hmm. which happens eh, pretty often, actually. I find a lot of cool larvae that I like to, you know, I throw it in something and see what happens. And I sometimes I even like forget about it. And all of a sudden, like there's a, some new living creature in that tank. I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> I forgot I threw that in there. <laughs> you know, it yeah. happens. All right. What is your most favorite bug you guys have ever caught? Oh, I mean, I already know the answer for this one for me. You you know the answer for this one for me. You know the um, answer. You were uh, there. You get so excited every time you catch something. Like okay, you, you okay, catch a, but... you can catch a catch a house fly, and it would look like somebody else's best bug moment. <laughs> um, that was a cool I, house fly. I'll throw I'll throw a couple guesses out because no, you, right there's off, only yeah, one. Right offhand, I don't know. Last year. Um, I, I, I know it's so easy. Um, in the grasslands. W- was it was it the uh, painted grasshoppers? Absolutely. Those are like the oh, greatest yeah. things I've ever caught ever, man. <laughs> like, that's, a, that's, and, that's a good one. That's a good one. I'm just saying, okay. I mean, it, it is the most beautiful grasshopper in the United States, hands down. There is, really no, there is nothing that even gets close to that, except for those panther grasshoppers were cool too. That was only the second time I've ever seen the painted grasshoppers. That was my first time ever seeing them in the wild. And, and I've never seen them. I've never seen that many like we saw that day. Oh, they were everywhere. And and right on top of that, I would say right back to back even when you caught the uh, mantispid, that like right. wasp mimicking mantispid, which I have yeah. pinned, by the way. It looks uh-huh. awesome. But I cannot, that, like, we're already doing this and we're catching all these awesome grasshoppers and then we're catching these cool jumping spiders, all these different colorful, like red ones. And then you mm-hmm. just bust out with the, with the wasp mimicking mantispid, like, you know, yeah. things that I always saw in a book and I'm like, oh, I'll never see that in the wild. That was, <laughs> a, that was a good day. And the video for that is probably the only video I haven't uploaded to my YouTube channel, Bugs on Cyberspace YouTube channel. Jesse's on there a lot. I think I did 19 videos so far from our trip to Arizona last year. And so I guess when this next one will be the 20th and it's in that video where I document finding one and then you coming down and seeing it for the first time. It's gonna be a great video. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So I to that one. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, I did think that maybe you were going to say the um, metallic green click beetle. Oh, that was pretty cool, too. That was a good find. Because you, you, you talked about those more during the trip and finding one, and you were really upset when Jesse or John had found one before you. And you I know, were I turned like eight years old in that moment. I, yeah. <laughs> I was just like... You were, you were going to find your own by the end of the trip. <laughs> hey, I did find one. And and I and that video is already up on YouTube. Yeah, I did. It, it just took a long time. I cheated. I actually just stole. I just stole um, Jesse Ray's, and I just like threw another one. Oh, I found one. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that's not true because we we took video of them later, all next to each other, where everybody was showing theirs, and there were differences in the way they looked, whether they were different species or male and female. I don't remember now what what they all looked like exactly, but. There was, yeah, there was one, there was a couple that were, one of them was dead when we found it. Oh, I remember Oh, right, that. I found that, I found that one. Yeah, I found right. that one in the sand, yeah. I would say that um, seeing all the different Pepsi's wasps last year was pretty cool, too, all the different, like, tarantula hawks. Yeah. And also watching the, the first year we went to Arizona, watching the big cicada killers, actually, I watched one actually pull in a cicada into its burrow. And, like, yeah. do its thing, that was really cool. And, of course, I had a crummy phone then, so I didn't even get good video of it. Right. Uh, here's, the, here's the next question. We'll kind of move on to the questions here. Uh, Grievous the Bloody, that's my friend Gary. He, uh, he's a good friend. He's, so my recent experience with chickens has shown me their individualness. Do, you, do insects exhibit unique personalities at all? I would say yes. And I, and I'm, and I say that because of cockroaches. You don't think so? Me? No. Yeah. Well, what, what cockroach... Uh relationships have you had in your life well I mean. for instance the ones that i have here 
the ones that I have back here, that one that that male that I've literally had, I guess it's more like they show. In, I don't, I don't, I don't I think they had necessarily like personalities, but um, you gave me that female roach, and that male has not left that female side the entire time since we first got yeah. it. Like they are so social, and I've even seen roaches kind of like. There's even been, I, I read something somewhere about roaches exhibiting like click patterns. So there'll, there'll be like roaches that'll hang out with each other in certain colonies and then won't hang out with other ones. You know, I mean, so yeah. I mean, it's kind of individualist, I guess, but I guess not fully, but it's definitely shows that they have friends <laughs> among their group. Yeah, well, I think, I think you can look at most any animal on the planet that has a mating instinct, no matter how well, okay, true. Or how simple it is, and um, you know, colony animals will of course have some some uh, social behaviors. Um, you know, per personality is just one of those words that is a very large gray area, True. and it's sort of subject to interpretation. And um, no two people are going to apply it in the same way towards something. And I mean, that's, yeah, like... that's sort of my diplomatic answer to questions like these. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, yeah, I don't really, I don't know. Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe roaches do have little bars in, around town that they go hang out with the friends at. <laughs> I, I've never seen any personally. <laughs> I, at, at this point right now, after all of this social distancing and not being able to go anywhere, I would go there in a heartbeat right now. And not just for the <laughs> Right. All right, here's another here. We'll move on. All right. Do you, got, do you guys find many wild American bur uh, burying beetles? I've been finding a surprising amount lately. Um, I find burying beetles sometimes. I find them near like carcasses and whatnot, but not not it very often, really. Definitely, I, I've only, definitely seen it. Hmm? The only time that I ever encounter them, and I, you go out somewhere hiking almost every week. I haven't been out hiking since that night that I talked about earlier in this live stream where we went out, you know, I don't know, it was late spring or something. So I don't frequently encounter carcasses in the wild, which are not terribly uncommon if you're going out frequently. Lots of animals out there, lots of things dying. Um, where I see them is at my black lights. So they are attracted to the black lights at night. Mm -hmm. um, so I will Yeah, that's generally when I see them is at night. Mm -hmm. I'll see them fly into my black lights and of course they're always covered in mites and if you go to you know poke at them a little bit to get them to move the mites kind of stir up and they get crazy and they start crawling all over the beetle and for a lot of people that's a really unsightly thing to see because um, you know just see, seeing all these little mites which are commensal they're just hitchhiking they're just going for a ride to the next location where the beetle is going to feed on something they're going to jump off and you know feed on the carcass that the burying beetle is laying its eggs on um, but one, one of my experiences with those beetles that uh, happens almost every time is when even when you touch them just gently they they poop out that really horrible smell Ugh. Every uh, single it's, time. It's, it's, oh it's not a solid. It's not a liquid. It's it's something in between. And it and smells. The, <laughs> yeah, the smell. It, it, I mean, it smells just like, you know, where they came from, which which is living in a rotting animal carcass. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if, if that could somehow smell worse. I thoroughly, I caught one. I saw one. I saw one flying in the air one time, and I didn't know that it was a burying beetle. And I caught it with my bare hands out of midair, and it just <laughs> reeked. And I was just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like I just, I just like let it go. And then I could yeah. not wash that off. It just took no. You, it was disgusting. You can't unsmell that smell. <laughs> oh, no, no. Uh, Byron Bird says we don't sadly have a native mantis in the UK. I thought, I thought the ones that were from here are from over in Europe. I guess we maybe do. not in the UK. Yeah, they must not be in the UK. I, I don't know country by country over there. Mantis religiosa is the European mantis. Um, right. It, yeah, so I, I would be surprised if the European mantis didn't also live in the UK like it does here. I also wouldn't be surprised if the European mantis is here because it was at one time also established in the UK because a lot of, a lot of the uh, insects and arthropods that are in the United States probably came from the UK. 
by way of other places. There's, right. there's a long history that goes on in the movement of organism from one country to another. And uh, it yeah. would be really interesting to hear the story on that. Maybe, maybe this person can comment back and let us know if the European mantis is established in the UK now too, like it is here. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, it, we have similar climates, so I guess it would sort of make sense. Mm -hmm. So the next question is, what is the best way to find a giant water bug? Hmm. I mean, usually I, I generally see them at lights a lot at night. I've seen them there. Uh, as far as in the water, I, I see them at night from time to time. They kind of tend to seem like they came. I mean, at least in Arizona, they seemed like they came out more at night. <coughs> In but, my experience, uh, uh, Jesse, Jesse's right there. Um, we'll see them in uh, ponds or yeah, very small mm -hmm. lakes. Uh, a little <coughs> harder to find them generally in you know larger bodies of water, and so uh, going up to them at night, uh, these bodies of water when you have the headlamp on. Uh, because when the sun's out during the day, it's reflecting light off the water. You can't see into the water. But when we shine our headlamps into the water at night and when the, when the water is very shallow. As they're way more day, noticeable. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're yeah. just completely obvious. Well, I, in, in California, I mean, I'd go, to, I'd go to like a gas station or, or certain times of the year and they would just be all over the lights. Like flying, I mean, like a I could probably, I haven't seen it in a while. It's been a long time and I definitely don't see them up here, but I, they would just be all over the place, you know, and on the ground walk, you know, doing, and of course, you know, little me, it was like in heaven. And I think I probably caught every single one I possibly could, you know, <laughs> but. Some, somebody just found one here in Oregon, just in the last. Really? I've days. never seen one in Oregon. Yeah, it was, it was right here in I think it was in the Portland area. It was somewhere within an hour or so of here. They sent me a picture. I can't remember who it was off the top of my head, or I'd give them a shout out. A couple names are coming to mind, but I don't. I don't want to say the wrong names. Right. Well, yeah. I don't know. My, I did find. I have. I, I had yesterday. I had two people message me. Speaking of uh, bugs, I've never seen in Oregon. There was the. Uh, you know what a locust borer is? They're those root boring beetles that are like yellow and black and they have all those crazy stripes in them yep. down yep. on the east coast mostly i've never seen one here in oregon and i had two people show me two different photos of them in this region and i was just like no way how did you find a locust borer out here and i'm wondering have you seen them out here before i it's hard to remember for sure i did see one i don't know if it was a locust borer and when you said that at first i was thinking locust is in the grasshopper but it's locust is in the tree um, and we do have locust trees here in the Portland area. Um, I, I may have seen one, but just one. I, yeah, I've, I, you know, I've looked for them. I've, I remember when I first moved here, someone told me and described one to me and said, oh, yeah, I've seen it. But that was like literally like 11 years ago. I've, I've, I've never seen one in all the times I've been out. So it's, it's pretty crazy. Uh, they're beautiful, though. They're really neat. Uh, here we go. Do you have any tips for someone starting a website such as yours? Uh, let's see. Beck's a bug guy. I'm going to assume that he's talking about your website. So. I'm going to assume he's talking about your website. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, um, make stickers, buddy. No, kidding. <laughs> like, yeah, well, I mean, if, if, if sales is the game, if that's the kind... I didn't start my website out being sales-oriented. Um, I'm trying to remember if this was one of my trivia questions for later because I almost asked it. I don't think this is one of my trivia questions, <laughs> but I started my website in 1997 and it was originally about phasmids or stick insects like we were just talking about. It wasn't until sometime in the 90s that I converted it into a sales website and sort of expanded my own personal hobby from just phasmids to mantises and other bug groups. So. Um, if you want to start a website um, it, that eventually becomes a business, uh, the first thing, of course, is just don't delay. Just put a website up right now and just make it an informational website, even if you don't have anything to sell, um, just so you start getting sort of an established presence there on the Internet. Um, and then uh, as soon as you have one thing to sell, just list one thing up on the website. Uh, I think I, I, I told you that back in the beginning, Jesse, when you were, start, you were uh, starting your business. I was just 
You know, it doesn't have to be complicated. Just, just make one product and then sell it. And then of course, through the process of getting that one listing up on the website, you know, you, you have a lot of fun doing all of that and going through that process and repeating that first uh, example is very easy. You just, you just do it again with something else, another bug or another shirt or another sticker. And uh, right. before you know it, um, you know, how, when did you, when did you put your website up, Jesse? Uh, January of 2019. So it's been, it's been almost two years and how many, how many products do you have now? Just ballpark. Uh, well, I have over 130 stickers listed already. 130 different stickers. 130 different stickers, yeah. It's 130 different animals. Um, I have probably close to 200 products. You see, there, there you go. That's how it's done. That yeah. answers the question right there. You start with one, and then a year and eight months later, you have 200. Boom. There you go. That's Just how it goes. Goes. I didn't know. I didn't realize Sierra was on here. What's up, Sierra? She says rainbow dung beetles are very shiny. Yeah, they're shiny. Yeah, you're right. That is. That also could be one for the shiniest bug, the rainbow dung beetles. Those are those are pretty darn shiny, especially when you put light on them. They look like glitter almost. Like looking at pyrite or something. Best. Uh, how long are we going to be live? Well, that depends. I guess that depends on the questions. Uh, best beetle for beginners to breed. That's your answer. That's your question, Peter. Um, I'm, it, it depends on what your goal is, you know, um, if, if you just want to experience the life cycle of something, get, get yourself 500 meal worms and, uh, throw them in a bin <laughs> yeah, with that. Some, some oatmeal. Um, the circle of life. Really the, the best beetle that is somewhat showy and uh, easy to care for are the harlequin beetles, uh, Gymnetus thula. Right. Um, they're about this big, about an inch long, a little under an inch maybe. Uh, bumblebee colored, black and yellow, really beautiful. And uh, you, can, you can raise them up in uh, well under a year from larvae to adults. Um, the larvae themselves are super easy to care for. They'll eat almost anything uh, organic based. You can throw leaves in there or just uh, compost um, right. leftovers from your kitchen, you know, whatever. Like they, they will tear through it, they will grow. And, um, and then as adults, they're very simple to care for. Also, you just feed them sugary liquids or sugary fruits, um, beetle jellies. Um, very, very simple. And so those are always my top recommendation for the easiest uh, pet beetle to raise that is more pet oriented than mealworms. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I end up raising mealworms a lot because some, some of my things don't end up eating them and then I just get a bunch of beetles. It's, you know, it's exciting. <laughs> it's, yep. it's real. Um, have you ever kept desert hairies communally? Um. I don't think I ever have actually. Now I think about it, I've never kept scorpions together. I know. Oh no, I had two emperor scorpions that lived together. They were they were fine together, but never a desert hairy. I never tried it. I don't think that anybody has ever kept desert hairies communally for very long because they will no. eat each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You know, That's there true. there there could be exceptions to these general rules where if you have a very large tank with lots of hiding spots and the scorpions, you know, establish their little burrows and territories because I've found desert hairies, um, you know, under different sides of the same rock, for example, or living in burrows that are right next to each other or fairly mm -hmm. close to each other, multiple burrows in, the, in, in a bank, you know, out in the desert. Um, and so, you know, these, these are conceivably, or, or you could say they are communal because they're tolerating each other. You know, one right. isn't leaving its burrow from two feet away to go and drag its neighbor out of the burrow and eat it. So, you know, given, given enough space and resources, it's conceivable that they could be kept communally, but um, captivity, tanks are a weird thing. It's not a natural environment. And so the animals aren't necessarily going to behave the same inside of a tank as they do in nature. 
And that, that could factor into higher incidences of, you know, cannibalizing your neighbor if it's two feet away in the wild versus in a tank. Hard to say. Haven't done it. Won't do it. The, the next movie featuring Peter Clausen, Cannibalize Your Neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good B-rated film. <laughs> I haven't seen you much lately, Jesse. I, I don't know why you're not coming over anymore. <laughs> well, you know, I don't have any more neighbors, so. <laughs> oh, God. Help me. <laughs> no, uh, you know, I, I know that, what is it, Centroides that you can kind of keep together for a while? Yeah, uh, a lot of our Barks- are communal. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. My longer, uh, bug shirt idea, Telosol Scorpion with elongated frontal appendages. Oh yeah, I'll definitely be having a tail of swim scorpion of all kinds of those. I, I need to do way more of those shirts and designs. Uh, do you guys see ladybugs? Uh, yeah, I see them quite often. Yeah, we get a, we get all kinds of ladybugs around here. Actually, uh, <laughs> a, f- a funny story. Um, <laughs> we had a we have a rose bush right out here, and there was just so many aphids all over it, and so. The idea was to take netting and put it over it, and so the ladybugs stay contained inside of it, which has actually sort of worked. But they all they all ate aphids on one side of the plant and then refused to go to the other side, so we just let them all go. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was really funny to watch because it looked it looked hideous just having this big net <laughs> over it. But there was so I mean it, I, I've seen a lot of aphids, but this was just like there was like a little bit of plant, mostly aphid, on this thing, <laughs> so it was pretty bad. But we got we got it we got rid of it. I mean I mean we got rid of the aphids, so we're good. The most common ladybug that I see here are the I call them twenty spotted ladybugs, even though that name really applies more to the eastern species. Uh, Silobora virginica, I think, mm-hmm. is our local uh, teeny teeny tiny salt and pepper colored ladybugs. Um, I find them on the maple trees and under maple trees no matter where I go, super common this time of year. The larvae are teeny tiny little yeah, white things. I thought the, these... for the longest, I thought that those were uh, like dermestids for the longest time. They almost they look, reminded they me look of They look so much like them, yeah. Right? Yeah, I, yeah I those things are crazy. I thought that too for many years. Yeah. Um, I don't remember now. But we have a lot of ladybug diversity in the area. I occasionally will see a, a black one with the two red spots, the twice stabbed ladybug. Um, you know, most of them orange with uh, a variety of spots, though, some without spots. Right. Sorry, I'm trying to look for another question here. Uh, let's see, is Appalachian Swallowtails a legitimate species? Butterflies, but I don't, you know, I, I honestly don't know that question. I, uh... <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I, don't know. I, I don't keep butterflies as pets, and I never have. Um, I don't know that I've ever raised, maybe painted ladies once a long time ago. But, I mean, you're talking about one. I mean, the world is so vast. There are so many different insect groups out there. And I obviously lean a little bit more towards um, the common Oregon insects or the common Portland area insects in particular, and then right. pet bugs as a, as, a, as a larger group. But um, if someone's going to ask us a question, of not just about a specific butterfly species that doesn't occur here, <laughs> but, right. you know, what the taxonomic status of it is, um, you know, they're on the wrong show. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, no, but, you, but know, I, I, you know, ask anyway, because it's fun. Yeah, I mean, why not? Uh, here's another sorry, question. Is sorry, it normal? Sorry, we don't know. My, my answer to that question is yes, and, and Jesse says no. <laughs> I, I, wait, whoa, you're, whoa, whoa. You're, you're no I said I have no idea. You're no better than um, no words for it. So is it normal for millipedes to try and munch on my skin? Oh, yeah, I have it happen all the time. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I actually never have it happen, but I pretty much never hold millipedes unless I'm making a video about them. Right, I don't, right. I don't have that bonding time with my bugs that a lot of people do, but people do very frequently mention. He, he bonds <laughs> with his bugs all the time. 
<laughs> well, it looks like we have uh, two minutes remaining. I didn't realize. We, so it looks like we only had an hour. So what we're going to do is, in these two minutes, we're going to ask, ask a couple more questions. We're going to get back on the live and do the trivia. So join back on after this boots us out. And we'll we'll get back on and do the trivia right after that. So we have a couple more seconds for some, or a couple a minute or so for uh, questions. Hey Peter, do you have any Goliath beetle larvae in stock right now? Um, I get that question a lot after uh, offering them for the first time and second time somewhat recently. We don't have any at the moment, but. Um, I'm hoping that the next, we decided to retain all the ones that we were maybe going to sell because they were quite popular. Hoping to have them available again, um, maybe by the end of the month, uh, not really sure, to be announced. Definitely right. if uh, the new website comes out, hit up the uh, waitlist feature for them because uh, there are way more people asking about them than there are going to be larvae available. Thanks right. for your interest, though. Uh, all right, 42 seconds here. I'm going to just do this one. Uh, where can you get stick bugs online? Uh, nowhere in the United States that I know of. They, they are a regulated group, and so you need to have permits for them. If you have permits for them, I might be able to find somebody that uh, can supply you with them. Um, but, you know, you don't have permits for them, so... We'll, right. We'll just take it one step at a time. Right. All right. Ten seconds. So, guys, if you're joining, uh, just join back up in a second. We're going to get on to the uh, we're going to get on to the trivia. A little bit for you got to get some more people getting back on, um, you know. So, yeah. Anyways, we got we got trivia trivia. You guys ready for some trivia? Uh, we, we're going to have a first, second and third place winner. Uh, if we have any ties, maybe we'll go into sudden death. That would be awesome. Sudden death. Finish him. You know? <laughs> Fatality. <laughs> um, so we have, uh, what, 20 questions? You got, 10, you got 10 questions. I got 10 questions. We'll go back and forth. I got 10 questions. All right. There's going to be some easy ones, uh, some not so easy ones. There are questions that are worth one point, two point, and there is one question that we each have that's worth three points. So... Um, Keep in mind on that one, I will write people's name down. First person to write to text it to us, we'll, uh, we'll get the answer right. And I'll make sure to let everyone know that gets their answer. So first question I'll start. It's a pretty easy one. Is uh, what are the large eyes on an insect called? And it's an easy one. Let's just get fed to the mantids. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to eat well tonight. All right. Tristan, Tristan uh, gets it. I hey, didn't, it. You, uh, didn't you make a prediction earlier? Yes, I did. I think it was before he even joined the live stream that he was going <laughs> right. to win. Mm -hmm. right. All right. Next question, Peter. What's your, what's your next question? How many points is it worth? Um, let's see. Uh, two points. And the question is, what taxonomic insect order are fleas in? Oh, my God. <laughs> Google it. Someone's going to know right away. I'm not going to make this easy on anybody. I have backup questions, too, in case some people can't answer my questions. <laughs> I mean, people can, people can Google it. I'm not here That's to judge. Right. Crap, it, trust me, uh, Tristan, I, I, uh, you know, I don't know this one either, to tell you the truth. <laughs> oh, come uh, on, Grant. Don't do yourself that way. Siphon after uh, Tarantula Collective. Got tarantula it. Collective. Yeah. Two points. He's, he's got one hand for, for looking things up, a phone and one hand for looking things up, and another one to watch. Uh, can prepared. you go, go ahead and repeat the question? Someone asked if they could repeat, if you would repeat the question. Oh, the, the question was what order, what insect order are fleas in? And Tarantula Collective has already answered it. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, next question is... Good job, Richard. Here's, here's one, here's one. Uh, this is two points. What is the Latin name for the beetle that is on Bugs in Cyberspace's logo? Ooh, good one. Huh? Huh? 
I almost this... asked a question about that species. We we could ask them what the oh. what the name what the name of your logo is. What my name is. Invertebrate your logo dude is. gets it again. Yeah. <laughs> That was two points. All right, all right. Next question, two points. What is insect poop called? Oh, I know this one. That's what you should go by. Uh, no, I'll, t I'll say it later when someone gets it right. <laughs> yep, yeah, our Sprout Ambassadors. Well, I mean, I bet you Aquarimax meant pets meant frass. I'm going to give you a point. I'm going to give both of them a point for that one. You should go by Mr. The, you should go by the frass man, Mr. Frass man, <laughs> Peter the frass man. He takes no frass for nobody. <laughs> oh, my, oh my god! Oh, I need to go home. That's that's sick. I, I'm done. <laughs> you are home. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Uh, two points. Those are worth two points. All right. I'll do that one. All right. I'll give you both a point. Arts Project Ambassadors and Aquarimax for that one. All right. Next question. What family do robber flies belong to? We'll see. We'll see. Mr. Zorak is online. Hi, Mr. Zorak. That's been uh, digging your uh, TikTok videos, Mr. Zorak. This has been pretty sweet, by the way. So what family do robber flies belong to? Uh, Acillidae is the answer. Tarantula Collective. Coming in with a sweep. Two points. All right, your turn, Peter. Next question is worth Two points. How many antennae do isopods have? Ooh. I got to watch this one closely. Accidentally got off, dang it. <laughs> Chris, dude. You know? We should you just think bump you know someone. Luna Mitza 88 answered four and that's correct they have two pairs for 88. four and ten how many points is that worth two two points two two all right i got i have another here's the next question for mine it's worth one point and what butterfly species has the longest migration of any other come on this is a very easy one if you know bugs Did Tristan comment that first? I didn't see him comment that first. Let's let's just say no. He's going to win anyway. <laughs> there we go. Aquarimax Pex got the monarch. All right. <laughs> Your go. All right. Uh, speaking of monarch butterflies, spell it correctly. What is the process by which a caterpillar turns into a butterfly? How many points? One. All right, one point. I can see your message, Grunt Higbone. Pupation. Nope. Aquarimax Metamorphosis, Metamorphosis is the winner. Aquarimax got it on there. He's All got, right, he's, that was one point. He, Aquarimax has a fast connection, no lag. I guess so. I guess so. All right. Let's see. Um, oh, okay. So this one is worth three points. This is probably the most important question of all of these questions we're going to have. So you listen in carefully and, cl and, and as um, clear as you can. I'll try. I'll try to. I'll try to do this slowly. So, what are Peter's favorite color of socks to wear? <laughs> <laughs> Three points if you get it right. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Definitely not blue. Two blues. <laughs> Red. <laughs> nope. 
I mean, are they pink? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like how everyone's avoiding saying the answer. <laughs> Nobody they don't wants want to, to believe it's true. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Aha! Aquarimax got it! Three points. They're white socks. Oh, the most famous white socks of all time. All right. So we'll see who's been paying attention. What was the answer to the first question Jesse asked? Ooh! Does it wear Singer. socks? Yeah, he's just a naturalist. He just he just goes by in bare feet. Actually, he doesn't even walk. Peter just like floats as he scours for bugs. He just floats the land. <laughs> I wear toeless socks, actually. Hello, can you see this? Oh, I'm looking at him. I can see it. Compound. Uh, I think Arthropod Ambassadors got that one. I don't think anyone else said compound above that. Yep, no, no. Those are all colors. Yep, compound. All right. Arthropod Ambassadors. How many, how many points was that? Oh, one point. One point. All right. Uh, next question. This is worth one point as well. And you have to spell it right. And this is going to be who can do this the quickest, pretty much. What are the three main body parts of an insect? And T beetles, I can see what you're typing, yes. I don't know, maybe uh, things are going different for you guys, but we're going by the list of what's going on, so. Let's see here, head, thorax, abdomen. I also said what, yeah, you know, arthropod, I don't know what's going on. I, you guys might be seeing things differently, but uh, as I scroll up on mine, uh, I go by the first one I see, and and that was the first one. Head, thorax, abdomen. All right, so who is, let's see. Uh, Aquarimax. All right. You can say hello to my pink. <laughs> Let's see. I think uh, I think it's Aquar. It's, I'm going to say it's a tie between Aquarimax and T Beetles because they're right neck and neck, and they, they they came like right at the same time. So that's one point, and one point for T Beetles. I actually see uh, Aquarimax Pets as the first person to answer it, and mm -hmm. then and then Arthropod Ambassadors had a comment about yes, saying that's what I'm first. seeing as well. And then T beetles had head, thorax, abdomen. So what what I'm seeing, uh, Aquarimax pets had okay. complete. But be a nice guy. Let let T beetles get a few eh, points. And, I uh, give you a point. Just gonna go. What what I'm seeing matches what you're seeing, Jesse. And uh, okay, you know, I'm gonna take a quick screenshot there uh, just for future reference, and uh, we'll just go on. Uh, was it my turn or yours? It's yours. I think okay. we're on. Next question here. I'm wondering if you were going to ask this one, Jesse. <laughs> but uh, what is my favorite bug? <laughs> I didn't post that. <laughs> Believe it or not, I didn't. Were you going that. to ask that one? Painted ladies migrate three times longer than monarchs. That's. I thought monarchs traveled the longest distance of any butterfly. Yeah, I don't. I don't know butterflies. Give her, give her a couple points. All right, I'll give, I'll give that, I'll give uh, Christy that. How, how about this? We should, we should give anybody who corrects us five points. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I even looked that one up, point. which is very strange because I even looked that one up and it told me monarch. So that was interesting. But anyway, what, all right. So, uh, what is your favorite bug? Has anyone guessed it right yet? Uh, gotta scroll down here. <laughs> Mother of spiders got close. Yep. Yeah, yeah, the new oh. one you just found. You know, let's let's give it to Mother of Spiders because that's pretty dang. Close. I was gonna say that that was what I thought your answer was. 
Yeah, I always say the exact same thing because that's the most commonly asked question. And I say, the next bug I see that I've never seen before. So Mother Spider's got that first, you're saying? The one yeah. you just found? I mean, it's, yeah. close, okay. it's, it's close enough. All right. And, and she said yay, so she's already celebrating. You was, that, uh, was that two points or one point, or how many points was that? Oh, that was a one-pointer. A one-pointer. All right. All right. What order What order do uh, insects do ants belong to? Shouldn't be too hard. This is worth one point as well. It's going to be a long thing to type out. <laughs> Oh, no hints. <laughs> Aquarimax, which, who is currently in the lead right now, by the way, uh, right next to Tarantula Collective, and uh, there's a tie between our Arthropod Ambassadors and Invertebrate Dude in third place right now. All right. Um, the next question is worth one point. In order... How many wings does a bumblebee have, and how many wings does a mosquito have? All right. Yeah, I don't know what, why people are seeing uh, things better. So, sorry if you guys are seeing your guys coming first. I don't know what's going on, but don't take it personally. Uh, we're literally going by what we see, and unfortunately, we saw we we're seeing it differently. So. Uh, I think, uh, invertebrate dude did not get it correct. Um, oh, let's scroll up here. Um, I think Christy Sked, or she Sked got it. Uh, who do you think got it? C-S, or C-S-C-H, C-Sked, or Sked, C. Well, no, Aquarimax Pets is like four people. Oh, I didn't, oh, there's Aquarimax, yeah, you're right. Yep. Man, Russ, Russ is killing it. Dominating. Uh, what? How many points is that? One. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. How? This is worth two points, so you have a nice chance on catching up there. Uh, so this is uh, where is it? Where is it? Yeah. How many legs does a house centipede have? Not just any centipede, but a house centipede specifically. I don't even remember the answer to this question. Well, I looked it up, so. <laughs> like, I, I, do, they, do they have the same number of legs as adults as they do as immatures, I wonder? Uh, apparently, that, like, yeah, I, I mean. 24, no, not quite. No, no. That Tarantula Collective got it, 30. That's a, that's at least what uh, what I was told on the research I did on the internet. So let's see, that was worth two points, right? Yes. So all right, your turn, Peter. Um, I got a a visual for this next one. What bug is this? <laughs> I get so many people asking me what this is. And so, Robbie Keane, we're playing a trivia game and giving out prizes. You're coming a little bit late, but feel free to answer if you know the answers to the questions. Robert Fly. Uh, let's see, the first one that I see on here is Invertebrate Dude. How many points is that? Uh, one point. One point. All right. This is, oh, not my, okay, my second to last question. Hold on. Let me get where I can see everyone's thing. All right. So this is one point. This is a, a this is a question that's going to, we're going to ask quite similar questions to these in our future ones. So keep an idea on these. So pay attention to all the videos that we put out. So where did Peter and I take a major trip last year? Where did we go? <laughs> it's like oh, Girl Scout got it. 
Girl Scout got a point. That was Arizona. Yep, good old Arizona. We were planning on were we going to planning on Texas this year or New Mexico or something like that, and then COVID. Yeah, happened. at the beginning of the year, we Texas was going to be the likely spot. There was some this discussion. is what happens, kids, when you guys aren't cool as teenagers. <laughs> that really hurts <laughs> my heart so much. Oh, yeah, I didn't really care when I was a teenager because I partied. <laughs> like... All right. Next question. Oh, you, no, it's yours. Yep, three points for this one. What species is this? Ooh. Scientific name, folks. Scientific name. Yep. Is, is that reign of invertebrates? You seen that one pop up? Yep, but it's not correct. Three points. This is this is my highest point question because I knew everybody was going to guess incorrectly. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm actually was thinking that was the same thing as they're thinking. So, oh, arthropod ambassadors got it. Got it. Arthropod ambassadors. This, this is not a ghost mantis. This is a shadow mantis, sister species to Phylocrania paradoxa, the ghost mantis. This is oh, a shadow mantis, Phylocrania illudens. So what makes them different, just while we're talking about it? Uh, the same thing that, that makes, you know, any two animals different. I mean, it's just a different species. They come from a slightly different place. They can't interbreed with uh, the other species, right, the right. ghost mantis. So just, just that simple. Very tricky. Tricky indeed. All right, yes. this one, uh, this one, well, Trench looked like you might get it. You never know. Um, what are the hairs found on most New World tarantulas called? What are the hairs? Uh, what are the hairs found on most New World tarantulas called? This is two points. That oh, Aquarimax got it. And I will take... Uh, yeah, I will. T I would take either one of those setae or uricating hairs, uh, or urticating hairs. Yeah, they're. But Aquarimax, is that what I, what I saw? Was the first one? Is that the first one? I think so. Yeah. I'm going to give someone a point for saying, or two points for saying urticating as well. So I'll give setae uh, or setae uh, two points, and who said? And then mother of spiders said urticating first. So I'll I'll, I'll give it two points for both. <clears throat> All right, Peter, your, yours is the last question. Okay. Um, what are the hairs called, Steve? What's that? <laughs> are the hairs called Steve? <laughs> oh. Yes. <laughs> uh, this is just a real simple one. Uh, we talked about them earlier. What taxonomic order, insect order, are ladybugs in? And that is a one-point question. So are you going to total everybody up here after this last question, Jesse? Yeah, mm -hmm. I already have a total right here. In fact, we have like a major second place tie going on. We're going to have to go to sudden death. Sudden oh, death. Who All right, got, I got it first? Uh, I would say fairy moths on my end, it looks like. Yep. Coleoptera, fairy moths. How, how many points was that? Just one. Okay. So, we have a sudden death. So, uh, Aquarimax, uh, you know, even though I just sent you a million, uh, a million stickers, <laughs> um, uh, you'll get to get three more because you got first place with ten. With ten, unless you job, want to, uh, <laughs> unless you want to not claim your prize, and I can make it go down to the next bump either way. Uh, Mother of Spiders, uh, wait, wait, before you leave, I think you were sort of on this list. Um, you are in third place, but I have a tied for second. 
I've been Vertebrate Dude, Tarantula Collective, and Arthropod Ambassadors. You were all three uh, in second place. So we're gonna do a we're gonna do a sudden death. So um, so the first person of you three to answer the question right. What well, you, you got a question, Peter? Just want to throw one out. You said you had some backup. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, guess guess what my YouTube video is going to be about today. What group of insects is my YouTube video going to be about today on the Bugs in Cyberspace YouTube channel? You've got a video coming out today on YouTube too. Did you post it yet, Jesse? I haven't posted it. No, I st I'm still editing mm -hmm. it. <laughs> yeah, so. I, mean, I was too. My process. Right, it. right. All right, so this is actually going to be a tie for first place because the Quarimax is, is uh, here. He's already getting a bunch of stickers coming to him, so. Arthropod? Yep. All right, Arthropod Ambassadors, you are first place. You got the sudden death correct. Yep. It's which about means me. now I have to do another sudden death for second place <laughs> because I have two people that are now in second place. <laughs> All right, so Arthropod is first. All right. Tarantula Collective and Invertebrate Dude. These are your two questions. These are your two questions. By the way, Mother of Spiders, if you are getting off, you did get third, third place. So please uh, send me a message on Instagram here, what sticker you want, and I will mail it to you. Give me your address as well. Uh, same with our Aaron. I think I might have yours address already. I'll, I'll just go ahead and send it anyways. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Just let me know. Um, I'll, I'll send you a message later, uh, Madi, the animal lover. I'll send you a message later. Just, just remind me, shoot me a message. Uh, all right. So between uh, Tarantula Collective and Aquarimax, or I mean, uh, Invertebrate Dude and Tarantula Collective, uh, let's see. Let me think of a question here. Hmm. All right. What is my favorite mantis? Since we're talking about mantids. I'm not sure I know the answer to this one. Should I know? Uh, yeah. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> Easy. All right. Invertebrate Dude and Tarantula Collective. Give me your answers. Nope. Well, no. The next one. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, uh, it's... Oh man, much bigger than a ghost. Oh, that is a nice mantis invertebrate dude. That is a nice one, but it's been a childhood favorite of mine. Who are the two people that are supposed to be guessing right now? Oh, well, I can't say whoever. Oh, okay, invertebrate dude, idolomantis. Yep. It is the devil flower mantis. All right, invert dude, you got second place. Will you, Tristan, send me uh, send me your address if I don't have it already, and uh, let me know what two what two stickers you want. And that's a wrap. That is it. We did it. That was a good time. That was fun. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Guys, tomorrow there is another trivia. By the way, we are. I'm going to be going live with Low Heat of uh, Mentodiology. He is a guru when it comes to mantids. You'll have a chance to ask him a lot of questions. He's going to go over a bunch of different mantids that he has. Um, uh, and also ones that he might want in the future. And we will talk about mantids in general. So uh, tune in tomorrow at 2 o'clock, my time. So what is that? 5 o'clock Eastern. Central is 3. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Thank you, Peter, for joining. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Till next time. Talk to you later. Right. See ya.